I think impossible is a word that has really no definition. Impossible is just limits that we have set within either ourself or our society that just haven't been broken yet. Whenever I talk to anybody and I say I'm from California, they're like, oh, okay. I'm like, well, it's probably not what you think of. It's extremely flat and there's a lot of farming out there. And no, I don't surf and I don't see all these celebrities every day. We're a farm town. People here work really hard, but we're super proud of being an agricultural town. We're in the middle of the most productive farmland on planet Earth. My dad needed help weeding cotton fields, driving the tractor, and moving the irrigation pipe. Any chance that we were free, we were out here working and helping him. Seeing my dad wake up before sunrise and come home after sunset on a lot of days was just the biggest source of inspiration that I had. We had opportunities to move to larger towns, to expose the kids to a larger school, but I've always been a firm believer, you bloom where you plant it. My brother has been there with me the whole time. Throughout our lives, you know, we were very competitive. He pretty much did everything first. Always having someone next to you, having that brother, never really was in that position growing up, knowing that I had to do something alone. They did everything together. I mean, even when Jason turned 16, got his license, he still wanted his brother Josh to drive him to school. Obviously, I wanted to be better than him. We definitely tried to push each other and make each other the best athlete as possible. I'm not saying that we didn't fight in high school. We actually had a really bad skirmish where, you know, I, I don't know if I should go into it. But you should totally uh, go I, into I, it. <laughs> We were, it was after basketball practice one day, and it was just a pickup game. I intentionally fouled him because it was game point, and I wrapped my arms around him so he didn't have the easy layup. Then I went down the court, and I hit a three in his face. He fouled me the next play. I threw the ball at him. He charged me. I charged him. And then he came and punched me. and Threw a punch, and I landed. It connected. Gave him a black eye. I got in my car, and I left him there. You know, he left me at the school. It's 15 miles out of town, and someone had to give me a ride home. <laughs> my mom called me and was like, oh, your brother's had it out. And I was like, oh, well, they'll get over it. They're like best friends. They'll hug it out. They drove and they pushed each other, yet at the end of the day, they were best buddies. It was me and him against the world. We pushed each other to try to be the best. Josh took his lumps, you know, he came into high school and he wasn't a very, very big boy. He came in here maybe 130 pounds, maybe 5'10", 5'11", his freshman year. When you're not very big and your tape's not extremely impressive, college coaches aren't gonna look at it. Fresno State, they're always known for getting local talent, keeping talent in the Valley. We went over and watched Fresno State do spring football, and I said, you know, what do you think? These guys are a lot better than you, they the same. He goes, coach, I, I could be better. I know I can. He says, dad, this just this feels right. You know, I, I want to be a bulldog. It got to the point where he was emailing coaches, just give me a look, I, I think I could do something. This was my junior year. You know, I'd been talking to a couple coaches from that school, and you know, I didn't know what their plan was with me. The recruit coordinator from Fresno State he straight out told me, he's small. Went to a camp, there was a few quarterbacks there and they separated the quarterbacks who I thought were the better group and they put them on this field and I kind of stayed back with the other group and I, I was extremely mad. I really wanted to be on that field with the guys who they thought were the better guys. I couldn't even focus on playing football at that moment. His hometown team that he rooted for forever passed him up. Being overlooked, obviously it, it hurt Josh to the core because he knew he could compete with the best of them. So Josh's senior year, he was on a mission. The goal was to obtain a scholarship. I was gonna do anything that I could to get a scholarship offer. I was emailing every coach that I could, just trying to get them to see my film. Still nothing was coming in. I know we're from a small town and we knew that our talent was small town talent. You know, we're in a D5 school. He will sit in there and get hit, and get hit, and get hit, knock down, get up, and throw the ball. He developed the toughness. Coaches just never thought of a kid coming from Fireball, the school that's never produced anybody. They didn't realize that if they're gonna judge something, judge his heart. This wasn't gonna be the end for me because I wasn't allowed it to be the end for me. When someone says it's impossible, I think it makes us work to try to get that thing done. It was kind of a slap in the face. Eventually took the junior college route. Got in there and worked extremely hard. I actually found a weight room and put on about 20 pounds. It was the only thing that I wanted to do. I'm focused completely on lifting weights, playing football. How bad you want it is how hard you're gonna work. Colleges still weren't rolling around and throwing out offers at me. You know, I ended up having one offer, and that was to the University of Wyoming. Coach Bowl came out to our house, and he looked us square in the eyes and said, My offensive coordinator has been all around the country, and there's only one quarterback that we want, and that's your son. Your son is going to be the face of our program. In my mind, I was like, finally somebody sees something in me. It's going to give me an opportunity to really showcase the type of player I am. 
The night before, he just looked at me and I said, Dad, I've never been more ready or prepared for something in my entire life. He just had that look in his eye, and I go, son, you're going to knock it out of the park tomorrow. So smooth. Yeah. So just smooth. Marched him down the field, and he was just getting better with every play. And then he took off on that 28-yard run and collided with the offensive back and hit him just right. We were watching that game with my best friend, who's a nurse. And so I thought he had injured his head. And she goes, Nicola, he broke his collarbone. And we're all, get up, Josh, get up. And he got up and then just fell back to the ground. 23 plays in, just lowered my shoulder, and the safeties kind of busted my collarbone. So we didn't know how severe the injury was going to be. After that, as a family, we were hurting, and I can only imagine Josh's pain. That was a tough, tough day for me. As soon as it started, it felt like it was over. When they talk about him having a chip on his shoulder, he came back with a vengeance, wanting to tear up anybody that didn't give him an offer, and to come back after an injury to show everybody that he is that football player that they want on the field. The revenge tour, stepping on the field, literally trying to embarrass other teams. You didn't offer me, and I'm going to come out in this field, I'm going to show you why you should have offered me. Sophomore season, you got 90,000 people in the stadium. This is something that Josh always lived for. We kind of knew at that moment, this pretty much dictated how the rest of the season was going to go. We saw some plays from Josh. The nation saw plays from Josh that, hey, this kid's something special. I wanted to prove not other people wrong, but I wanted to prove me and my family right. It's not you versus the world, it's Fireball versus the world. People get caught up in the NFL hype. This guy can throw a ball this far. This guy won the Elite 11. What they didn't look at was, this guy wants to compete every day. Watching my son with a packed house right before the game, getting the crowd involved, and just, you know, it's like, that never gets old. I mean, you just look at, that's my son. And I think there's a lot of things that the NFL can evaluate. They cannot evaluate a person's passion. He's just passionate about the game. Walking across the stage is what I dreamt of as a little kid. Holding the jersey with the number one on it and my last name on the back. The thing about my last name, I get to share it with my family. So they're walking on the stage with me too.